everybody, I'm Ross and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing off the work in progress of my Helix and a quick overview of some of the changes I made. So without further ado, I'll get started. So to start with, all these tables along here and the modular tables along here have all been um, redone again to have the wheels sunk further into them. So now I no longer require blocks. I know on this side I don't. As we can see, no more blocks. Um, these leg adjusters do the trick, and I'm so happy for that. However, as for the helix side, it still has yet to get done. Now, speaking of the helix, I'm going to take these uh, top sections off, and then I'm going to start uh, positioning where I'm going to put that rod. At the same time, I can't find my hacksaw, so I may step out and check my uh, cabinet again, because I'm pretty sure I left it in there. But without further ado. Now with the tops and bottoms out of the way, I can focus on getting these rods and set them in position. I got four quarter inch rods and I'm hoping that'll be more than enough strength because, I mean, it's just a model train and it's going to be put on some very thin platforms. And those thin platforms, they may have the same plug that sit behind the camera. That board is like this thick or something. At any rate, uh, I'm going to set them up and see how things look. Okay, so here's what I got in mind for the helix is I got these little rods. I've seen Chadwick Mara way away talk about these and I'm going, you know what, that's not a bad idea. That make, that would make things even more easier. Excuse me, sniffles. And not to mention, um, a little more time consuming, but you guys get the idea. Now I have done here is I've drawn an 18 by 18 box. And this will be a circle at some point because I want to have a turntable here to, um, not this way, but come in this way and switch out large locomotive steam well, be tongue tied, to bring in and turn around large steam locomotives. So flip them around by hand, you know, pick them up and do. And save like the top section at some point. So this becomes the biggest design challenge. Um, the track we see here is Bachman Easy Track. This is 22 inch radius to help give me a hand, figure figure of an idea where things are gonna go. So this first one is set because it'll be more than enough clearance. My biggest issue is trying to figure out where to place these rods. Because if I go here and here, well, I gotta be inside that, uh, just inside that there too. So yeah, so this was a circle, which is in it right now. So if I went here, I should still get through the uh, uh, two by two because I got a two by four stud underneath that. And place one over here. Then same thing with this side, make a little bridge across. And then get clearance over here for this midsection. And at some point, uh, I'm gonna take these, uh, cut these ones down to size, because I'm not gonna cut them down all the way, but we'll reuse them. So that will set up for that side. I'd rather try to get them the closest possible because the studs are there and it ain't going to happen. So if I put one he uh, about here, and the scrap piece over, oops, it's come down, and then put one at the same spot, that should work. I hope. Let's get my drill out and find out. Got my quarter inch bit. Oh, this is really, really going to make things interesting. Because normally when you do a program to do up the math for the helix, usually it goes from point, junction, 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 or, or sorry, connection piece, right? Well, in my case, it's, uh, hopefully I can get, achieve that, even though I'm placing things over here. Because normally, like I would set out, I usually go from the middle, 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 and um, elevate that way. Because I'm doing a design challenge on myself here, this is the best way it's going to go. So if I stick this, no, let's go here. 
because I don't want anything to scrape on that. Let's go there. Let's see what happens. And this isn't um, glued down yet, so to do that, but that's okay. Get this started. Oh, we're going crooked. So we're just. Yeah, I could have just a little bit. Okay, there. So just inside. Yeah, no, this, uh, this ain't gonna work. Cause I gotta get a nut on there. Shoot. Hmm. I don't think this table is going to work. I've used 18 inch tra uh, radius track, but that ain't gonna work either. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay, so I did some figuring out, and like before, where I said normally you just wanna go get, you know, each section, which I'm gonna do here. So basically, I've just taken that and shifted everything this way. So now we should have room for washers and nuts underneath the table and on top of this, all the way around. I've got them pre marked already, except for over here because I need to get foam for that side. And I've also redone my box, and I believe it should, should work because this isn't seen under here anyway. This is just going to be where trains go in, come out that end. Like this is like a Rocky Mountain transitioning, right, to another scene. And I should still have room for my um, turntable. Now, back to drilling. Alright, so I have that hole. There's one, and the puncture back like a little. Okay, got a little dust buster. two. Maybe. There we go. Now something I forgot to do was to measure how long these are because I might be able to make four out of these. How long did they say these were? Three pi, so a quarter by 20. 20 inches. How many feet? Three feet. Hmm. I need to traverse 12 inches, so I could make easily, well, it's a little more than three, more than one three, but I could easily make three of these. But let's, uh, let me get these threaded down and see how much I can actually physically take off. I know I can at least make two solid ones. That's a start. Well, good news. I found me hacksaw laying on the floor of my cabin and behind a bunch of stuff. How typical of me. So I've got these two in place. Um, I'm going to drill out the holes for the next two. And I'll bring the board back over and place it on top. And then I'm going to do a little trick to mark these off in the top piece so they'll slip on through. So now here comes the fun part. Um, these are up really tall, but what I plan to do is I'm going to gently push them down a little bit each, set this piece of plywood back into position, screw nail it in, and then line these back up, and hopefully I get them level. 
Like I have a level, but I don't know how accurate where I'm going to go. So. Alrighty, so screws, screws, screws. Now I have a trick for marking the bottom of these. You just take a little piece of grease, put it on the end, and then smoke it up top, and the bit of the grease will stay there where your stack center is. However, let's go mark it with a pencil. Just as good a job. My eye is up. Okay, now let's see how well these rods go back through. But before I do that, let's take these little stickers off. I'll do them no more. And grab uh, some washers. My bag of stuff. I them myself. Here's what I want to do. Put a washer, a nut. Actually, even before I do that, what I want to do is make these uh, holes bigger. I mean, theoretically, I don't need this chunk of corner, but I might as well just leave it all universal anyway. And yeah, I'm going to find something to cut those out. All right. Next time I do the other side, I'm going to cut the holes first. Because <laughs> that, that was a good 15 minutes farting around with that. Did anyone see farting around on YouTube? I don't know, YouTube monetize me later or give me a band warning. So with all these cut, now to put washers. Hang on, I need more washers. Now in the future, I'm going to need a lot more washers and a lot more nuts. But for tonight, just to get the length that I need for these rods, so I'll be right back when I'm done putting these all down on. Well, that was quite the finger dexterous workout. Um, these two here, much like it's opposing ones, they're all done. I've got these into position. And I'm going to take a break here, get some supper, and I'll come back to this next week. Because I'm going to have to spend some time thinking on how this is all going to work. So right now I've figured out that I can put the uh, turntable down here, but the turntable up top, that's all the question of mystery. So top side, I got my demo piece of track here to figure things out. I need about 20 inches. So there's about 20 inches there. And I mean, if I set this turntable up, I could cut right tight to this track here or go a little further or something. But at the same time, there's going to be a, let me, the, let me just hook the camera here. At the same time, there's going to be on this side of the upper area, there's going to be a little um, scenic view of a town and a village you can pull into, unload people if you want, and then continue onwards and other goods. It's not going to be like a big scene, just a little bit, and I'm trying to incorporate that in. However, the way the uh, this helix is mathed out, when it comes up and through, it's going to cut up in behind here, come along, and then come to come out that way. So there'll be a curved scenic piece to hide the fact that there's a train coming up behind. At the same time, like normally when you build a helix, you won't have a whole top board. It'll just be like a whole ramp system, right? I want this board so I can put, uh, like again, the uh, turntable in. So when this track comes up here, it's going to basically come cut down into it anyway. So this board is probably going to change drastically along with the other one. But at the same time, I need to make sure I got um, something to support this corner. 
and this corner because these um, these are going to come out. These are still just temporary in there. Ah, okay, like I said, it's about five o'clock. I need to get some food, and I'll be right back probably next week. It is now the following week. It is currently Tuesday, and as I speed along and do this, I'm hoping, and I'm just hoping I like the results, and because it's all modulated, this whole thing, that one thing messes up, it can mess up another, which kind of did for the two turntables I plan to put in this thing, so crossing fingers. So first thing I'm going to do is, because I got this seam here, is... Make sure this is all going to look the same. Okay, nothing good so far. Now I'm going to grab my saw and saw these other two up. Now one thing I wanted to point out is most folks, you would take these rods right out after marking the release set with the nut and then cut them with your hacksaw or grinder or whatever else. However, I'm going to lop mine right off the top and because I also have another option to put the blade different spot. I'm going to do that. So now all I'm going to do is come in here. I can't even see the camera right now. So in view. Yep. Come down here, get it in flush. And just going to start sawing away. And there's one. One down, three more to go. Now I've got my four pieces. Now to rinse and repeat the first step. However, I don't have enough nuts and washers, so I'm going to reuse what's on this side for this side and get it set up in place. So before I go further, I want to test out my uh, GG1 for clearance. If this thing clears, my 2882 should clear, as my GG1 was the first to suffer a minor scuff on each end when I was doing some um, railway testing and all that, and it scraped against the wall. Now, without further ado, seems to do pretty good. I think my 282 should clear that, but when it comes time, I will get my 282 down here to test it. And a piece of rolling stock. There's no problem. For some reason, I had to put these two and the other two a little closer together for some odd reason. And over here. No issues with GG1. And no issues with the rolling stock. Good. And here we are. So now, what happens next? So this point moving forward, the helix will now be put on hold, as there is no rush for me to get the uh, second level done due to the current cost of lumber products. So for the time being, over the next several weeks, this module, that module, this one, and the two in the back, I'm going to finish getting them all done up and ready for the second level. But that also means I can also start ordering track, and like I plan to do, is start laying track on the first level, get everything set up and looking nice. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.